Dip bars and parallel bars are very popular sports equipment. Using this equipment, you can do amazing exercises such as dips, which are one of the most effective and powerful. What will happen to your body if you perform dips regularly? I'll analyze it in detail in this video, so watch it till the end. It'll be very interesting. Let's go! Regular dips contribute to the growth of strength and muscle mass. Dips give an excellent load on the lower pectoral muscles. For pumping the lower pectorals, this is probably the best exercise. Although, of course, the division into upper and lower pectoral muscles is very arbitrary. And one way or another, when pecs work, both upper and lower parts work. But there is still a slight shift in emphasis. In addition to the most powerful effect on the pecs, dips also work well on triceps, deltoids and back muscles. You can shift the load more on the pecs or more on the triceps. If you want to pump your pecs more, then you need to shift the center of gravity forward, that is, slightly tilt the body forward, and keep your legs either straight or slightly bent at the knees. If you want to work out the triceps more, then you shouldn't tilt the body forward. You should keep your legs straight, take your elbows back, and shift the center of gravity to the palms. And there is another advice that is sometimes given. If you want to pump the pectoral muscles more, then the elbows must be spread apart. And if you want to pump the triceps, then you should take the elbows back. And yes, it's absolutely true. But there is one thing. The fact is that if you spread the elbows to the sides too much in such an exercise as dips, then this creates an increased load on the shoulder joints, and this is potentially traumatic. Therefore, in order to prevent injuries, it's not recommended to spread the elbows too much to the sides. The elbows should still go a little bit back though, even when you pump the pecs. Is it worth it to do dips every day? Since relatively large muscle groups such as the pecs take part in this exercise, it's not recommended to do it every day. In addition, it's quite high intensity, multi-joint, requires significant resources, and as a result requires a relatively long recovery. You need to rest for at least two days after dips. That is, I wouldn't recommend you to do dips more than twice a week. If you already can perform more than 20 reps at one set, and your goal is to increase muscle mass as well as strength, then of course you need to increase not the number of repetitions, but increase weight and intensity. There are also a few very important things to keep in mind. The fact is that dips are potentially traumatic. You can really get injured if you don't follow the correct technique and don't know certain nuances. First, you always need to maintain a static body position. This doesn't mean that it has to be straight. It can also be tilted forward if you want to shift the focus to the pectoral muscles. But if you tilt it forward a little, then you must maintain this position both at the top and at the bottom. You shouldn't swing. The angle of the body mustn't change in the upper and lower positions. Secondly, you need to remember about a correct amplitude. It shouldn't be too short, because this leads to low efficiency but it shouldn't be too long either. Performing dips with too much amplitude is fraught with injuries, and this won't add muscle growth. You need to go down to the position that you're comfortable with. When you start to feel that the tension is already too high, you shouldn't go lower. If you want to stretch, then do separate stretching exercises without weights. And in dips, you shouldn't train stretching. In most cases, it's comfortable for people to go down to a position where the arms are bent at the elbows by about 90 degrees. It's enough. Take care of your joints and ligaments. Another very important point. When you're at the upper position, you need to drop your shoulders, not slouch. This is an important point that can prevent injuries. That is, when you have risen to the top point, your head and neck shouldn't be literally pressed into your body. On the contrary, when you rose to the highest point, you should straighten and stretch your head and neck. If you feel that you can't do it and don't have enough strength, then you need to reduce the load and you shouldn't chase the number of repetitions to the detriment of proper technique. I also recommend you to watch other videos on my channel. Links are on the screen now. If you like this video, push the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.